those two games. What, what clicked for this team in game six and seven? You know what, Houston? We're going to the World Series. We came home, we came home to win this in front of your fans. We thank all of you for coming out and celebrating with us because we're going to the World Series and we're going to bring back four wins. Personally, uh, and what an event here! What an event here with all such, such great team leaders. Um, it takes me back a little bit to to my early days. So I got to make sure I can see you guys. But how many of you have ever been put in a leadership position that makes you uncomfortable? Okay, me too. You see, you see my face on that, on that during that World Series. It can be uncomfortable to be a leader, and that's okay. I don't care if you're 10, 12, 15, 43 like me, or older. It's okay to be uncomfortable in a leadership position. Okay, when I was a young, a young person in, near your age, I'd always get put in front of teams. I was always, you know, maybe it's because um, you're one of the better players, maybe it's because they think you can handle it, maybe it's because the teacher likes you or the coach likes you, um, but I was always asked to be that leader. Then I moved forward to Stanford, and I went to college, uh, one of the best universities in the country, and you're put in a position uh, to be a leader. I didn't know what it meant. Then I was on the Olympic team in 1996 in Atlanta, and I remember Coach Bergman, who was at LSU, there's probably a few LSU people in it, right? I knew, I knew that always happens, it always happens. He asked me to stand up in front of the team every single day and, and deliver some sort of motivational like rallying cry. I didn't know what that meant. And then I became a player in the, in the big leagues and, and I soon realized it's hard to lead a group of men. Then I became uh, the manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks before my days here in Arizona, in, in, in Houston. And, and I was asked to be 34 years old and stand in front of a group of, of men 
and lead them uh, as their manager. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, now I find myself in this position. And, and what I've started to realize is every single time along the way, I would think that leadership was about me. It was about what I want, or what I want to do, or how I want to communicate. And in reality, leadership's about the people you're leading. It's about me connecting with George Springer after an 0 for 4 and 4 strikeouts in game 1. Okay. George Springer's pretty good. And what I learned is most of the time, the way I was taught when I was younger, you'd have to go sit in the manager's office and get told what to do. But guess what? That's not how he communicates. He communicates through text. So what I did was I texted him encouragement. Because that's a big word when you're talking about leadership, you've got to encourage. You know, and sometimes it's not about it's not about what you want, it's what that person needs. Right? So when I see it, when I see myself on 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 TV or I see myself uh, you know, as the manager of the Houston Astros, and I think, gosh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna lead Jose Altuve, and how am I gonna lead Marwin Gonzalez, and Carlos Correa, and Dallas Keuchel, and Justin Verlander? He's pretty good too, right? And one thing that I've learned by the World Series is that it's my job as a leader to find out what's best and to get the most out of them and find out how to reach them. It's not about me, it's about them. And so when you find yourself in a position of leadership, it's not about power, it's not about popularity, it's not about, it's not about being the loudest voice, it's not about being the boss. It's about your ability to get the most out of someone else. The, the, best, the best example of leadership, in, in my opinion, and, and I'm sure there are people in this room that were all affected by the hurricane, and the leadership wasn't standing in front of the crowd. They gave me the mic and they told me to stand in front of the crowd. And they said, hey, just help us give some hope back to the city. The leadership was actually our players going out into houses in Baytown, going out to houses in Sugarland, going out to, to homes in, in, you know, near the woodlands where I live, and making some, doing something good for somebody else, something that I said in a, in, a, in a brief speech. That's leadership. Because why? Because it was about them, not about me as a leader or the person that was doing the deed. You know, to the, to the teachers in the room, you know, you, you can't pick a leader. A leader has to evolve. And most of the people would say, you know, go to your best player on my team, Carlos Correa, one of the best players on our team. Hey, you're going to be the leader. So I hold a team meeting, and I stand up and I say, does anybody have anything to say? Most people expect the leader to say something. What they don't realize is we had a room full of leaders. Josh Reddick did it by example. Jose Altuve did it by energy. Uh, George Springer did it by playing really loud music and being really happy every single day. Carlos Beltran, Carlos Beltran did it by being nearly my age but still playing and giving back something to the game to the players that are younger than him. Everybody does it different. There's no book, there's no, there's no perfect way for you as a person to be the leader. But there, but there is a way for you to get the most out of somebody else. So I encourage you to be yourself if you're found in a leadership position. Trust yourself, all that you've learned, all that you know, and then help someone be better than they were than when you got there. To me, that's my job as the manager of the Astros. That's my job as, as, a, as a father of two young children. Uh, it's my job as a, as, a, as a person in the city of Houston. Make, make, make them better. By, by investing in them. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. To be at this event is really powerful. Uh, you guys have a great opportunity. Great opportunity.